All right. Here. All right, ladies. Thank you so much for your time this evening. I, um, as I was, uh, Constance, I was kind of sharing with Ashley. So Simone is fucking, well, she is traveling in Italy. Um, her bags never made it. They never put it on the plane. So she literally was stuck in Milan and is on a bus to Florence now. So she will not make it. And then the last I heard from Nadia, she had a procedure and um, she wasn't feeling well. So I want to go ahead and move forward because we kind of pushed it back for a while. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to lo lose the momentum of me actually wanting to do this. So we're going to yeah. move forward. Um, and then I can connect with them on, a, on another level and we can just, you know, they can answer those questions. They can even do it in a written format. Mm -hmm. But I did want to spend some time just talking with y'all about this whole experience. I feel like you all were a part of this journey, whether that was the first thought of me thinking about the egg freezing process, just talking about the desires to want to to have a family, to get married, to have kids, have to want a fa to want a family. So I just wanted to get y'all together and talk about the impact it had on you with our friendship and our relationship, but then also as a woman, especially in our community, like being a part of it and you learning more about it and becoming more knowledgeable. Because I'm sure you know you may even you know just based on me posting it and that you were there, you may even get questions from women as well, just based on the experience, of what you know. Uh, and we know that Constance has helped me actually capture all of this um, for my blog. So she is intentionally learning more about the process. And I know, Ashley, you said you looked up some stuff as well. So I just can't wait to see, you know, how this journey has um, impact you, um, you know, just being a part of it. And before you arrived, I sent y'all some of the questions. So we will start there. But before we start off, is there anything that y'all would like to say before we kick it off with the questions? Um, just thank you for letting me be part of the journey. And I, I really learned a lot and we'll discuss that later. But um, just thank you for letting me be part of this journey. Okay. Yeah. And that's what I said in a text to you probably at like five o'clock in the morning one morning <laughs> that um, I just feel blessed that. Um, you chose to let me be a part of it because, you know, learning about this and um, finding how much I did not know prior to uh, has been, <laughs> has been inspiring actually, you know, so that I can hopefully share with other women who are of age and um, are thinking about options that are not necessarily traditional options. Yeah. And that's, that was very intentional. Um, um, one, thank y'all for being a part of it, and I'm happy to hear that. But I was intentional about who I let have access, and I, we talk, probably talked about that anyway during this process, because I think that it can be just stressful and emotional, and mm -hmm. you want to have a strong support system. And to have y'all physically here means more than anything, um, because I don't have actual family here. And I don't know if anybody else would have had the patience to kind of deal with some of that stuff. So I do appreciate y'all putting, you know, some of your things on hold to be here physically with me as well. So I will kick it off with the first question. Um, so what were your initial thoughts when I told you I was freezing my eggs? Uh, um, well, I can start off. <laughs> so we discussed it years before and you know it was kind of like in the back of my head but I didn't understand it you know my thing is hey if you decide to do it you 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 do it but once you I heard about other people like infertility issues the first thing I thought when you told me was that's smart you're being proactive you have you have control of situ some situation that people just don't have any control of and I thought it was a very smart smart um, move um, a, a, a smart um, way to ensure um, that you're able to do something that you desire to do so I thought it was very smart that she was being proactive that was my initial thought yeah uh, my initial thought was curiosity you know because I didn't know anyone who had taken that journey and so the whole egg freezing thing I'd heard of the concept but never dug into it never knew anybody so I literally when you mentioned it I was like hmm okay all 
right then, <laughs> you know, because I knew that through you, I would learn more about it. So that was my initial thought. Then I had some other thoughts later, but I'm sure we'll get to those. Okay. All right. Yeah. I just want to know like what you were feeling, even though it may have come up in the past, but once I said like, all right, I'm ready to do it. What were your thoughts? So good. Okay. Well, you kind of talked about this, you know, coming in and what it meant to you and how it affected you, but what did it mean to you to actually be here through this process with me? Thinking about our relationship that we have, our friendship, the things that we've shared together and, you know, things we'll continue to share in the future. But what did it mean to you to be here, like to make that decision? Man, I was so happy that I did. And I thought about the fact that I literally was supposed to be somewhere else, you know, but as you know, the closer it got to that date, the more uncomfortable I started to feel about going out of the country. And, but then as soon as I made the decision to say, forget it, if I lose my money on this trip that I've paid for to go to Mexico, then I re it was just peace. And instantly it was like, oh, now you can be there for Jessica. So I sent you a text like, hey, it wasn't even draw me telling them other folks no. I was like, hey, um, I know you didn't invite me. You plan to kind of do this solo, but I don't feel good about that. I think you need to have somebody. And that was before I knew that the other ladies were coming on board too. And um, so, because I felt like you were minimizing it and we talked about that. You know, so I was like, yeah, you know, all this, I can do it by myself. I don't need nobody type of thing. Yeah, yeah, but this is major, you know, and I didn't know, I still at that time didn't know a whole lot about it, but I knew that it was major. So I was excited, you know, and then afterwards, I was so happy that I was there because I would have felt some kind of way had I not been there, you know. After finding out really what it was all about, yeah, I would have been upset with myself had I not at least offered. Uh, well, when I first heard, it was it was never a doubt. I already told you when I heard, I was like, I'm coming. Just give me the exact weekend. But just as in, just reflecting on our just friendship is so comforting that even God allowed me the flexibility to come because without a doubt you are so deserving of people to be around you and support you you're always there and just for me to have an opportunity I don't care how big the surgery how small it is just to be able to be there to support you and something so major is a blessing um it was an honor to be there too so it was more more of an honor because it is a major decision that you made and that um and you you did it I mean you did it and you taught so many people in the process so not only only were you you know just to be part of the process and just to be there for you for you just being just an awesome person and just friend and sister friend and Sora and everything over the above it was it was the word I would use it, it was an honor it really was you know, it's funny that both of y'all are like, there was no question that you would come. Now, uh, the common, common theme there is, I didn't invite you. <laughs> Not I know you say, didn't invite me, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Not to say, you know, and Ashley's pregnant. I'm like, are you sure? Just know, like, if you, you know, uh, and even you and Constance like, no, me and James are going to drive. And I'm like, all right. You know, but it was really, I think the most important piece here is, and I think other women can learn from that, is like the friendship and sisterhood where you have people who want to be there for you, even when you don't recognize something is major. Because like Ashley kept saying, like, this was this was major. And in Constance, you talked about like it was major and I was minimizing the situation, which I learned later and still after. Um, and I talked to, I told some of you all that like I can just, I still experience like I'm not as motivated. And I thought it was just like a procrastination. But then I'm learning through some of the groups, like some of these women are still experiencing lack of motivation from the hormones. And some of them are even going through depression. So thank God I'm not experiencing that. But it was something major because my body, you know, I hadn't been on birth control in 10 plus years. So that in itself was an adjustment. But then also getting all the hormones and barely being able to walk the day of the procedure and all being here was something that I didn't really know that I needed. And 
yeah, I, I would have to say that, you know, y'all pretty much invited yourself, but I think that is very important for, as a friendship, you mm -hmm. realize when a friend needs you and they don't even know when they need you. So I do appreciate that. And I think that that is something that other, other women and men, but other women can learn, especially in our community about sisterhood and how you can make a decision to be there for somebody when they don't realize they really need you. So um, lots of learning still for myself because I definitely have minimized the situation. Um, okay, so the next question is, so so I, just wanted, something. I just wanted to add something to that. Um, <laughs> with, with, in saying that, because you give so much of yourself, you do sometimes minimize, you know, whenever something is major. And one thing I wanted when that's like with the pregnancy, oh, you're pre I didn't want to hear any of that over the weekend. That's why I said, don't worry about me. I don't care because you were, again, you was putting something so major, you could barely walk up those stairs. I was faster than you for sure. And, but, but that's, just the person you are you are selfless and that's why everybody really wanted to be there to social support so that's all i wanted to add yeah yeah, yeah you know. you're right yeah that's a good way to put it you're right about them stairs too um yeah. <laughs> i was i told somebody i was like i felt like i was moving like a turtle it was you know when it was time for the procedure i'm like oh yeah it's time mm -hmm. so um okay well so coming into this experience when you think about like you know, you packing your bags, constant, y'all loading up the vehicle and you had a 14 to 16 hour drive, one of the two. Yeah. And, you know, Ashley, you're having to wrap up school and get your stuff together. And I know you, both of you guys got tested before you came in, but when you think about just coming into the experience and packing or preparing that week of or the weekend before, you know, that you were coming, like, what was just going through your minds? Were there any thoughts during that process at some point before you actually got here? My only thought was to keep the students away from me. I didn't want to add any, I didn't want to be sick. I didn't want to make you sick. My concern was you and your health. So I was more or less worried you know, I'm cheap. I even put a hundred dollar insurance on that plane ticket just in case I got sick. Um, so I, my concern, I didn't think about myself. I didn't think about the baby. I, I was just concerned about the students making me sick because I knew you needed to be healthy, you know, and I could, I didn't want to ruin that moment. So I think I was a little bit, I was worried the entire time the week before leaving. Yeah. So that was my oh, I'm sorry, were you done, Ash? No, I'm done. I'm done. I'm sorry. Okay. So um, for me, it was initially I was like, it seemed like things kept shifting. Like, oh, I'm going to go to the doctor today. He's going to tell me if they're mature. He, so I was afraid I was going to miss it, whatever. It, I didn't know what it was, but I was like, I just feel like I'm going to miss it, you know, because <laughs> your doctor's appointments are like that Thursday and Friday or whatever. It seemed like things were changing each time. And uh, so that was my first thought. I hope nothing happened. Because I think you were actually going to the doctor on that Saturday, too, or something. Maybe you didn't go after they saw. Whatever. It was a lot of moving and shaking. That's all I remember. <laughs> and um, so after that, then it was gratitude for my husband. It was gratitude that he was willing to drive, drop everything and drive with me for 16 hours. Um, it was gratitude that I didn't even know where I was going, but he didn't question that, you know, because he knows how I feel about you. So, um, and, and he could have been in my ear like, okay, now why are we going again? And what you going to do? You know, I wouldn't have had answers for any of that, but it would have irritated me that he was even asking, you know? So um, it became gratitude. And then it was just fun. Like, oh, we're going on a road trip, you know? So it was like three different phases. Afraid I was going to miss something. Then, oh, I'm so grateful that James is willing to do this with me. Sight unseen. And then, um, oh, this is going to be fun. We get to drive to Texas, you know. Mm, the patience that both of y'all yeah. have to have. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, it's listening to Ashley. I was like, you know, if it becomes a risk or like you're concerned at any point, 
you and the baby. I understand if you don't want to come. And she was like, that wasn't even a factor. So mm -hmm. for her to say, like, she put my health first, I was like, you know, I'll be all right if you don't come just because I understand where we are. So I am grateful that, you know, you weren't just really concerned about yourself, but my health as well, because I did self-quarantine, right? You know, mm -hmm. when I got back from Florida, I wasn't around anyone until I actually went to the doctor. And then when you all came around, Constance, you guys got here first. That was the first time I had actually been around someone for longer than a few minutes. But um, I think something that you kind of highlighted was I kind of set some expectations for myself, thinking that, oh, so I'll start my, I'll start my injections on the 10th. That was a Monday. And then they're going to take them the next Wednesday. So even Ashley, when you were planning, you were like, well, even if I come in after the process, I can help on the back end. And that's what I assumed. I was like, okay, they'll take, they're probably going to take them Wednesday or Thursday morning. And it ended up being Friday. Mm -hmm. So to your point, Constance, you know, I thought I had an idea of like what it would look like with the injections. I was supposed to go Friday. My second appointment was Friday. And they thought they would have to monitor me over the weekend. Yeah. So that was to determine if they would have to increase the dosage. But I was doing, I don't want to say I was doing so well, but my follicles had grown to a point where I didn't necessarily have to come in on the weekend for them to monitor it. Mm -hmm. And then Monday I came in and they had grown um, a lot, but not quite ready. So even with that, you know, I just, yeah, I'll be honest. I just knew Wednesday. That yeah. they would they would take them. Yep. And even when I talked to the nurse um, that Monday, I was like, can you give me a date? Because I knew that Ashley was coming in Thursday morning. I um, also knew that, you know, Nadia was trying to come in. Simone was going to be here Tuesday. So I, I, I felt like I didn't want you all to miss it as well. Mm -hmm. So I think that God planned exactly where it was supposed to be, even though it was so many, you know, follicles and so many eggs they retrieved. But he timed it where all of y'all could actually be here for the process because we didn't think it was going to play out like that. Yeah. Um, okay. So in ind individual conversations that I had with you all, um, we talked about how we, we aren't having conversations about infertility or just fertility in the Black community as a whole. So is there anything that you've learned throughout this process that you think would be valuable for other Black women to, to know just based on your experience or if you've researched something on your own? Um, I know that in some of the posts that I posted, some women shared that they had also gone through some type of IVF process. So is there anything that you think is it beneficial for other Black women to know about what you've learned through this process? I think um, it's important to know your body and to ask questions. Don't wait until you're with someone if you desire to have kids when you turn 30. Get tested. Know, know your status. Know your options. So I do think it's important just being in, on this journey and just learning. Know your options and know so you won't be surprised. Mm -hmm. um, and it made me appreciate life just a little bit more just through you because it's just like, gosh, I didn't know this. And I didn't know infer infertility in African-American women was higher than, than, than um, other races. So just know your options. Be proactive. Know your options. You do not have to wait. You know, so that's one thing I would say the advice through this um, process is just know your options. I have to piggyback on Ashley with ask questions, you know, uh, which aligns with knowing your options. So from a personal perspective, I know that I made a lot of assumptions about me and whether I would be able to conceive and how much time I had. And almost all of those were wrong. You know, um, I felt that if I went for my regular checkups, and I made it known to my gynecologist that I wanted kids, that anything I was supposed to know, she would tell me. And that's not what happened. Um, by the time she started to have those conversations with me, I know now, but I didn't know then, I had already started to go into early menopause. And so another thing too, when I say I made assumptions, my grandmother had my, um, youngest uncle at like 47 and so 
I thought I was good. You know, my family doesn't go into menopause early. My aunts still had their cycle and all of that. So I just thought from genetics, I was going to be good. And so I, I literally went into menopause fully uh, at 44. 44, 45. And um, like I haven't had a cycle since I moved here 2018, probably 2017, late 16. And um, I just didn't expect it to happen that quickly. I did not. So by the time I got here and got married, um, it was a wrap, you know. So I, I just wish that I had not, A, made assumptions about how much time I had, and B, as Ashley mentioned, being proactive and starting to um, know what those options were in the event that I wasn't getting married, you know, as quickly as I thought I would, and knowing that I still wanted kids of my own. So, um, yeah, this process has taught me a lot about what I, sh I could have done differently in my situation. I think, so both of y'all brought up a really good point about asking questions. You know, that's one thing that, so I'm going to switch gynecologists just mm -hmm. because of the location of where I am. And I've kind of expressed to both of y'all about just an experience that I had where um, I didn't like some, some of the communication that I had based on some concerns. So with me moving, it's the right time for me to, to switch anyway. But that's one thing that I am going to ask is, like, I don't know if I can actually conceive and carry, although I had a high number of eggs, right, yeah. that were frozen, but I'm not sure that my body will be able to handle that mm -hmm. or if it will be successful. And I think that's something that we can ask questions about because wow. when we look around, you know, sometimes in the Black community, at least with my family, you know, I come from a big family of siblings, and then I have a lot of nieces and nephews, and I never heard about any struggles of mm -hmm. fertility, so... I just assumed, you know, somebody called me fertile myrtle <laughs> when I posted the number of eggs, but I just yeah. assumed that it wasn't an issue and yeah. looking, you know, researching YouTube, being a part of support groups, and then even that eggs over easy film, you know, there are a lot of black women that struggle, but they also, we have the highest number. And I do think some of that comes, you know, and one of the women shared that what we put in our body, how we eat, and we don't even realize it's starting at a young age. Um, some of the challenges that it could create, but you're right. We assume that we can carry because others around us carried, or maybe because, you know, our grandparents had 10 to 15 easy and Correct. the trait would just carry, carry on when it's not necessarily the case. So definitely agree with asking the questions. And for myself, I still need to ask the questions because freezing eggs is only one part of the puzzle. You know, can I can I get pregnant naturally? Which I know that doesn't have to be the only way. That doesn't have to be my first attempt, but can I? Can I carry? You know, a lot of women have surrogates. So that's something that I'm going to, to actually research when I switch to a new gynecologist uh, here shortly. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, Constance, you kind of talked about it when you went into, you know, you assuming that you'll be able to have children, but from your own personal desire so you desiring children at some point Constance and then Ashley you're now pregnant mm -hmm. you know whether you have children or, not or want to have children overall like what do you think is um how, what do you what do you feel about the egg freezing process just completely honest I know people feel that it's non-traditional so they may not always be in favor of it but when you think about it like what is your overall thought of the process in whole in considering religion, I think that's important. That's something my therapist and I talked about. Um, and I told her that, you know, um, someone had kind of made the comment, like, it's as if you um, play, are playing God. So I think that's important that we, we, we all come from a religious background. So I'll let y'all share. I'm in favor of it. And, you know, the reason why I'm just a big proponent of women doing what's best for them, you know? And so I, I wouldn't even feel comfortable commenting on what one woman chose over the next. You know, I'm just grateful that the option is there. 
I will say that uh, it concerns me, the expense of it and the fact that it's not common practice to cover it under insurance policies. And uh, I feel once again, you know, it's something that only the rich or middle class have access to due to the finan financial portion of it. Um, and so that makes me sad that, you know, someone making minimum wage can't have the same opportunity to preserve um, their eggs as someone who makes more money does. But, you know, that just gets into whole economic statuses when it comes to, as a country anyway, some of the issues we face, challenges we face based on socioeconomics here. When now knowing more about the process, I feel like the egg freezing process is hope. It's not hope for just the person who's freezing it. It can be donated for people who cannot produce their eggs. So I, I do think it gives women a chance and it's, and it's, and it's, it's hope for, um, for people who really desire kids who cannot have, have them naturally. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I do view it more now, just going through this this process. It's just, it's, it's hope. You may never, and I told you, I said, I don't, you probably never use those eggs and have your babies naturally, but what's unnatural about it? It's your eggs. You, you, you see, so it's all about perception, but I do view it as hope. And it's not necessarily for you, but for someone else. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good word to use. And, um, and I think it give a lot of women hope um, especially if they have the, the, the financial support from their insurance or their, um, their company. I think that's, that's why I kind of chose the I've got options because I felt like it was important for women to know like there are more options beyond, you know, you can't happen to conceive or you have, you know, you experience miscarriages. There's other options where you're able to, to have a child, whether that be through a surrogate um, if you need, you know, an egg donor, sperm donor, or if you decide to adopt, right? A lot of people are doing that as well. So the fact that they have options, but I think it's interesting to talk about like the finances and the, the expense of it. It is expensive um, and it depends on the doctor that you go to. What I do like is there, are, I don't know how many companies, but just being a part of the egg IVF support groups or egg freezing support groups on Facebook, some some women actually join companies or actually, you know, pursue companies who have coverage because it is so expensive. That's and fine. even though I only had to go through one cycle, you know, there are some women who are on four or five cycles and there are some women who have almost tapped out of the coverage for one company, which some of these companies provide you know, I've seen somebody come in easily twenty, thirty thousand dollars. That's a lot to go towards the process, but the medication in itself was like three thousand dollars, and I purchased it here in the states. And when Constance and I were talking about just um, just the researching and things like that, some people actually purchase their products out of the country, and I could not see myself ordering medication. And no one talked about it being a scam. You know, it sounded like everyone had success. But I would be so uncomfortable to purchase expensive medication at a reduced price from Turkey. That was one of the one of the countries they threw out there. They were getting it from Turkey. I just would not feel comfortable. And also, you know, some of it has to be refrigerated. So you think about it coming over here and how long it's been outside of the refrigerator, which you can do. You can do pretty good without it being refrigerated. But even the concern of the temperature changes, right? even though that it's got the ice pack on it. It's just so many things to consider. So I hope that companies will continue to look at the option of providing coverage, just like they do for adoption. I know at least with my company, they provide something towards adoption because it's such an expensive process, especially depending on um, the infertility of the woman. Because you can go through multiple rounds, not just one. And then there's also an additional expense when it comes to actually you know, inserting the eggs or the sperm, the embryos. So that's a whole nother thing on top of the expense that I incurred. And um, storage too, right, Jessica? And storage. So I How much is the storage? $65 a month. <laughs> um, it's like a real storage fee, huh? It's a real storage fee. And I think this is an important question. I don't know if I was 
I, and I hadn't been on social media much, so I'm not sure if I saw it on social media or if it was an article that I just came across. But even the storage fee, there is a major concern with making sure the right eggs are being stored. So mm -hmm. when you talk about asking questions, and I think we've heard some stories about, you know, they use the eggs and the baby looks may not even be the same way. So there's some issues. That was one thing that I requested the fertility physician himself to tell me, what are your checks and balances to make sure that my eggs are labeled as my eggs? You know, what, what are y'all going through to ensure that? So um, I think that's something that's important that don't put your trust that they are going to make sure your eggs go and label through your name and then you use them later. And you happen to be a black woman and you, you have a white child or it's clearly the child is, you know, biracial and it doesn't seem to be, you know, genetics or somewhere down the family line. So I think that's important as well. But there is a storage fee that, you know, is subject to, to different expenses and it could be on-site storage or it can be off-site storage. So that's something that people should ask before they go through the process. Um, so the last question I have, and I feel like y'all have already answered it, but are there, is there anything else that you would like to say? The question is, are there any takeaways? But I think y'all have shared that in multiple responses. But is there anything else that you think um, that you want to share, you want to share with me, um, or that you just want to mention when you think about the women in your family and maybe some women that you are close friends with that may desire to have children or nieces or nephews that will, not nieces and nephews, nieces who will eventually want to have children when they, when they get married. But is there anything else that you just want to kind of share before we end the call? I think um, this whole process was enlightening. I learned a lot. I learned, you know, sometimes your pre your judgment before, you know, learning it makes you for one grateful um, to be in the place where you are, but it also makes you not take advantage of time. We don't. We say time is, you know, time is not important. It, it is. And time matters and it's for anyone that's younger that want to go through this process or even older, do not take advantage of time. You go out for what you want. If you want it, don't wait on it, especially if you can afford it. So I would say to my nieces, if they it, it comes to a time where they want to have kids, don't you don't have to wait on a, a, a partner that will God will will provide, will find you will they'll eventually the man will eventually find them but don't take advantage of time and don't assume ask questions so that's my takeaway because I it was a lot I didn't know I'm still asking questions um but that's one thing I would say don't take take advantage and don't assume so can you guys hear me with this vacuum cleaner going I'm sorry I don't hear the vacuum cleaner oh, okay good um, so what I would say is don't minimize the process because I felt like you were pregnant, like real, for real, for real pregnant, you know, the way you were moving to Ashley's point. Um, I felt like we were going in for a scheduled cesarean. I did, you know, and even like the change from with me being there from Monday through Friday, uh, the change from how you were Monday when we went to the doctor's office and how you ended on Friday walking into the doctor's office, it was a complete difference, you know? And so um, I literally was like, she, this girl is pregnant. You know, it's like a real pregnancy. And uh, so I would just say, um, don't minimize the process. And I think you were able to have some forethought in making sure that um, you cared for your body and you went on a moderate diet type thing, not eating or not drinking any caffeine, that type of thing. I think that was a great idea because based on what I saw you walk through, I believe your body needed that, you know, and maybe that's the reason why you're not going through some of the other major symptoms that some of the other ladies are going through is because you took a grace period for your body to prepare for what was to come. Um, yeah, so there was a change in, in just the movement from when you arrived Monday, definitely to Friday. Even I felt like at some point stuff was a blur. 
Like I was moving and going through it. And I think the best way to put it is I was so present in the moment that a lot of other things I just can't recall because I was so focused on myself. But um, it do. You think about it now, you know, I was really bloated. I was moving slow. It was so uncomfortable to sleep the night before the process. Like I went to use the restroom and Nadia opens the door. She's like, are you all right? And I'm like, yeah, I just want to use the bathroom. <laughs> but she, she said she could just feel me tossing and turning throughout the night. I clearly wasn't comfortable and I wasn't, it was a lot of pressure. And I definitely wouldn't say it's, um, it's the same because I don't know what the pressure is like of not being able to sleep. But, you know, even Ashley and I have been talking about like as she's growing, like she's starting to experience that discomfort with sleeping as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it could be similar when you do think about that. And then you think about the number of um, the follicles that had grown. Like, you know, we were definitely praying for more than 30, but almost 50 that seemed to be a really, really high number. Just talking to other people and reading some of the comments. Um one thing I will say is the minimization, I think minimizing just in general, I probably do it a lot. So I can do better with that. But knowing that, actually say you're still learning a lot. When we are born, we just have a certain number of eggs that we would have for our lifetime. And I saw that um, Constance, that you were tying that in when I kind of scanned that I just assumed I was producing more eggs every month. And I'm born with a certain number and that's it. That's it. And everyone at a different point in our life. So Ashley, you talked about time. You know, my 20s may be the time where I produce the, you know, high number of eggs that I release every month. So once I get in my 30s, there's a lower number that it's just the science of it, right? How do we know um, when we talk about that? But I do think it's important that you're not going to be 35 to 40 and you're still releasing and producing the same amount of eggs because you only got a certain amount that you're born with and then every month they're releasing. So the the eating was something that was important to me. And I asked some of the women in the egg freezing group, you know, the nurse even, you know, I asked, I was like, she did no drinking, you know, try to stay away from caffeine. And another fertility physician that I went to, they said the same, but I've seen even some women, oh, I still work out. And I'm like, how are you working out? Like, I could barely move, you know, working out, still drinking wine, um, which I've also heard some people say, oh, one wine is fine. But I was like, I didn't want to do anything that would, that would be a risk to the process of it not being successful. And even when I think about working out, like, you know, the last day that I was able to, before I could actually work out again, I hurt my back. So, you know, our bodies are so soft and delicate. And I think we move so much. And we're so used to doing so much and playing the strong role that we don't even realize how important it is to be delicate with our body. So I just want to thank y'all so much for coming and joining me this evening and being a part of this egg freezing journey. Um, you all are, are absolutely like a, an apart, important piece to this puzzle. When I think about it, like you are an important piece. I've never had that many people in my house at one time. Let's start there. <laughs> uh, I never hosted a dinner, so I got to host y'all for the first time. I never got so many people complain about my stairs. Constance, you, you didn't get the luxury of doing that. But between Ashley, Nadia, and Simone, you know, I got a video Simone sent me of, I think Simone was throwing down the paper towels to Ashley because they didn't want to walk up to get the paper towels <laughs> on the second floor. So outside of actually the egg freezing process, like we were able to enjoy, you know, each other as women and sisters. So I really appreciate that, that y'all just coming together and being a part of this for me. So I love y'all. And, you. Love you, too. you know, it's so much more to come and so many other opportunities that we can be there for one another and then continue just to to educate black women to, to, to stay connected. Cause I know a lot of black women, you know, say they don't have black women, female friends, but women can get along yep. and, and support one another. It can absolutely be done and there can be long friendships. So I appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Love you too. Ashley, before we go, um, I just want to say you are beautiful. Like, and to see, um, Bernard's excitement during the gender reveal, like, man, that warmed my heart. It was so oh, sweet. Like, I was like, dang, I'm so happy for him. Like, wait, <laughs> Ashley, the one pregnant, but yeah, I'm happy for Bernard. 
you know, I mean, he, you can tell he got what he wanted. He was with the woman. He wanted to get it from, you know, I mean, all of that I read through that video, that short video. And, you. Um, you know, you look great. So I know that's an aside because it really doesn't matter. We want a healthy baby, whatever mama got to go through to get there. But I did, I did want to let you know that you are, you do look beautiful. Thank you very much. I don't feel that way. So that was nice to hear. Oh, no. <laughs> the baby is yeah. definitely, uh, it's, the, it's the features in the um, app. You know, you have to touch oh. it because, oh, yeah, my face is breaking out. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, no, I can't, can't even. I appreciate it. He was like a candy. He was like a kid in a candy shop. He was. He was so excited. Was. So mm -hmm. he's still and, on cloud nine. Yeah. So he, he's still, you know, is is it's nothing but God. You know, through this process, I'm a, I'm appreciative. You know, just with the it's so you can't even be sad. Like you know, you have a little moment like, oh, my mom is not here. Yeah. He's so happy. I'm so thankful because it just, it, it bleeds through. Like you cannot, he just wakes up happy. Hey, baby, he talking to the baby now. <laughs> well, it's like, hey, baby girl, you know, so it's, 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 um, I appreciate your, your prayers, your love, your support through the, through the, um, social media. And I just, um, but he, I mean, he really is 10 times worse in person, <laughs> but he's happy. He's very happy. I am too. That's good. I am a little uh Ashnard, um <laughs> for Ashley. You know, we still thinking of a name, but I definitely think they should co you know combine it. Go ahead and put both names together. Um, but yeah, you could tell he was real happy. Now that he knows it's a girl, he know what gender he's talking to. <laughs> yeah. Until y'all decide on a name, he know who he know what gender he's talking to. So <laughs> I think that's so sweet. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy for Good. sure. Yeah, see there, you don't have to minimize yourself. You talking about you didn't want to talk about you being pregnant. I'm like, but you are pregnant, so we are gonna talk about the fact that you are pregnant too. When you was here, <laughs> like we was happy to see your little stomach, even though it's grown. Yeah. Um, it's grown it's now. So, when I see, yeah. yeah, look oh! at that. Yeah, it's like it's good. Just I like said, that. Like, it's girl, she said she was like, I left, and I know I might be being extra sick, but I think my stomach is grown. And I'm like looking back at the picture I took here, and I'm like, yeah. Oh my gosh, like a life is really growing inside of her and she's mm -hmm. expanding. So it's beautiful. I yeah. did not have a stomach before I got there. It, it's crazy. That's what when she said, I said, I did not have the stomach last last week. And so every week it looks like the kids, but my students, they're my reality checks. They're like, you're getting bigger. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so yeah, but it's, it, it has grown since last week. So it's very, it's, it's, it's just interesting just to see mm -hmm. kind of the sleeping part is getting like a little bit like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm, I'm grateful and I'm thankful for sure. Thank you. So, yep. All right. I'm going to give y'all back the gift of time. We went only an hour, not even an hour and a half. So I appreciate y'all and thank you so much. Love y'all. And I'll talk to y'all, I'm sure, individually at some point this weekend. So yeah. thank you. <laughs> Bye, ladies. Have a good night. Bye. 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 Bye.